As mentioned in the previous video, we have a thing with the interp that we need to take a look at. So right now we have an interp speed of 15, which is fairly slow. And the problem with that is that if you're standing on a flat ground and in room scale you're moving up and down, like bending down in your knees and jumping or something, then you will experience some kind of a lag because of that interp. Normally when you move around, I haven't really felt any difference, so it's not that um, big of a problem if I'm kind of moving on stairs and so on, because, and actually also on ledges, because there, there will be change in height anyway, which is, by the way, gonna cause a little bit of um, uneasiness anyway because your body can't feel it's moving but your eyes see it is moving so it is something that will eventually cause a little bit of um, motion sickness but that is a different topic but in order to get rid of that lag we have here we should take a look at how we can deal with that and the best way I've found to do that so far and it is not the most elegant solution, I have to admit. But it requires me to fire a line trace going after here. So on the check floor, once we pass the sphere trace and all the additional branches here, then we fire off this line trace. And the point that we're going to fire off from and to are going to be the same. Oops, not break, sorry. So I trust you will make this a little bit more pretty than I will. But for now, I'm just going to make them like this. So also make sure to change this to navigation and let's set this to for one frame so we can see what is going on. So if we break this one open, then we will have a, an impact point going from the middle of our uh, capsule that we can compare now with the impact point from the sphere trace, like this. So if this, the length of this is greater than some small value, let's say 1, the reason why I don't choose 0 exactly is that it can, there can be a little bit of a difference, so 1 is OK. Then I want to select a different interp speed based on that. Gonna plug this in here. So what this tells us is that if this difference between the two impact points are greater than one, then we're gonna assume that we uh, have a height difference of some sort, and otherwise we're gonna interp instantly or more or less instantly. So that means if we are on something moving around in some flat areas then the height difference uh, is going to be happening instantly and otherwise it's going to interp kind of smoothly. So if we take a look at how that behaves. You might notice that when we're moving up the stairs, it's moving more or less smoothly. It's it's something we can, if we want to exaggerate this quite a bit, we can set it all the way down to five.
you also see here that if we are moving down a stair, uh, then it's going to snap down. Now the left trace point that we have about here, that is the sphere trace, and the center one is the line trace, and they are technically on each their level, so they will smoothly inter interpolate until they get off the step here. That means that the sphere trace is going to hit in the middle and also the uh, line trace in the center is going to hit in the middle and they're going to be basically at the same spot. So in order to fix that, um, we're going to, instead of only using that impact point coming from the sphere trace, then we're going to use whatever height our the bottom of our capsule is and compare that with the sphere trace impact point. So we're going to choose the one that is highest up in the air as uh, the determinant of whether or not we should smoothly interrupt or not. So I hope that makes sense. In my head it does, but <laughs> I've been working with this for quite a while now. So I'm going to break this one and also this one. And then we're going to select um, check which one is greatest and then we are going to make a select vector. So either we're going to change, choose this one or the bottom of the capsule. And then we're going to use that in um, this one. So let's select this part here and collapse that to a macro just to make it a little bit more clean. So these two, the A and the N vector here, they are the same. So we can just move these two up here and then Get rid of this one and this one. Let's rename them to A and B. Like that. Okay. So let's give it a test more. And obviously you don't want to have too slow of an interrupt here because otherwise when you move up the stairs then you'll end up bumping into the next step here. So I'm going to set this back to 15 for now. And then you'll have to take my word for whether or not this works in room scale when I'm just standing flat on the ground. Like I say that it's moving just fine. So it's following my movement up and down perfectly. Alright guys, that is what I had for this video. Thank you for watching and 